On this episode, we get some fine adjustments done to our Mustang GT in the hopes of making it run better. Welcome back to the Auto Obsessive Garage. Chadwick with you again for another installment of Project Rich Running Pony. And that is our 1989 Ford Mustang GT. It came into the shop with a very rich running condition and a myriad of other maintenance items that just weren't done to snuff. So we're there. We've got everything worked out pretty good. Now it's time for the fine tuning. We need to really look at the following things before we can make sure this thing is good to go. So in this order, we're going to approach this problem. We're going to take care of that ignition timing. Just ensure it's right, set the distributor correctly, double check with the timing light. This is a very integral process to get a car running right that's seeing the things we're seeing with our Mustang. After that, we are going to set that base idle. The car is idling pretty low. It's surging a bit. It's not happy with where it's currently set, so we're going to set that correctly. I'll show you how to do that. And thirdly, the throttle position sensor. I just cannot get behind the sensor being held on with RTV. And I know that's the history of this car. The previous mechanic really loved his RTV uh, and loved it in places and in ways you should not love RTV. So let's get in there. Let's replace that throttle position sensor just to make sure everything's good there. And that should get us at a good baseline to get the car running well and be in a way better spot going forward. So what do you guys say? Let's get in the garage, get some work done. So I've gone and rotated the engine and confirmed it's at true top dead center, which is on the compression stroke of cylinder one. Basically real easy to get to that spark plug and double check. As you can see, our rotor looks to be a little off. And the only way you can change your rotor because it does lock into the distributor a certain way is to go ahead and pull up the entire distributor out of where it interlocks with the cam and move that rotor to that spot for the number one spark plug. That could be causing all kinds of issues. Let's go ahead. Loosen up the same bolt, the same adjustment bolt down there. You can kind of see them there. Go ahead, loosen that all the way and remove that little piece so you don't lose it down your engine bay. And then we're gonna go ahead and lift the whole distributor up, clock this correctly, drop it all back down and check our ignition timing again. Let me bring you guys up to speed how we got this distributor in. So you need to find top dead center. And for me, the easiest way to do that was hand crank the engine after removing spark plug number one, which is really accessible right down in there. So go ahead and I put a rubber silicone tube in there and ran it up so I could hear the air more. So top dead center is when cylinder one is on compression. So the piston is coming out. It's gonna force that air out. And you're gonna hear a dramatic hiss. And to make it easier uh, for me, since sometimes it can be loud in the garage, is I ran a silicone tube up here in the engine bay and I can hear that hiss really quick. So if you can get it tight into the hole and do a decreasing diameter hose, that works even better to amplify that noise. So once I heard that, I got the engine to top dead center. And basically you're lining up, and I apologize, I don't know how well this is gonna work here, but you're looking at your harmonic balancer down in there and you're gonna see timing marks. You can see it's pointing right to the zero degree, which is top dead center. Once you have that all aligned, you need to pull your distributor out of the engine bay. This whole section here, you can see the cap is removed and I triple checked my firing order to make sure all the plugs are correct. Now just look at the number on the plugs, trace it back to its spark plug to be 100% and prevent insanity. Go ahead and make sure your distributor is aligned as follows. Now there is a gear on the bottom of your distributor, Put some gear lube on that so when you install it, because it meshes with the cam, basically how your ignition timing is driven. When you go to install this, you want to have it kind of canted this way, put it down because that gear, the way it's turned, it's kind of like a screw, is going to cause your rotor to rotate. As you can see now, my rotor is exactly where it needs to be, pointing ahead. You've, you can look at your MFI down here and you can see it's always at a 45 degree angle almost, or between four and five o'clock. And this should be perfect. This should be timed perfect with top dead center. Now we're gonna have to adjust it. There's always fine ignition timing that you need to do and you need to have a timing light, which we're gonna do, but this should be good enough to get it in time, start the engine, everything should be good. So you gotta make sure you're at top dead center. Don't have a false top dead center. 
and just don't go by the marks because if you're not at top dead center and you set this thing 180 degrees off, it's not going to really work well. So we're going to make sure to plug everything back in, the MFI connector right here. Well, you can see also we have the spout or spark out connector off. You want to have that when you're setting the timing. But when you put everything back in, we'll put our cap on, it only goes one way. We are gonna be good to start the car up, get it up to operating temperature. And then, of course, we're gonna go ahead and use our timing light. I think it wants to be around 10 to 12 degrees for a fairway stock car. So that's what we're gonna aim for. I have the 10 degree mark highlighted on the harmonic balancer. So that's what I'm gonna be aiming for with my timing light. Let's go ahead and put this back together. Oh yeah, the adjustment bolt too, that's down there. You wanna tighten that enough so you can still move your distributor, but you don't want it too loose where the engine vibration is causing it to move. All right, let's get it buttoned up and do the ignition timing. Now I always found the connector on the distributor to rub, and it looks right around the thermostat area. So I modified that with a Dremel. You can see a lot of dust and debris down there, but I just kind of modified that with a Dremel uh, so it can pivot easier. I didn't like it contacting there because it made it hard to adjust. So yeah, basically just a Dremel with a stone piece on the end and kind of filed down that corner, not to interfere with the screw being able to hold the sensor on, but that made it a lot easier. So let's clean up my mess I made and go ahead and get this thing put back together. A lot less smoke, but it's still idle surging badly. You can still see a bit of smoke, but much better. The next troubleshooting diagnostic step I'm gonna perform is setting the idle, the base idle for the Mustang GT. Now it's pretty straightforward to do this. Just like every car from this era, you do have to disconnect something and it's gonna be this idle air control module here. You're simply gonna disconnect this connector right here. You're then gonna to come to the back side where your throttle cable goes underneath and this is gonna be visually challenging, but you can see a screw down here. Yours might be an Allen key. Mine in my particular case is an 11 millimeter bolt. We're just gonna turn that clockwise or counterclockwise to get to the desired idle. So if it is idle surging, sometimes too low of an idle, the car will do that. So we're gonna to try to play around with that, try to get the base idle set. After that, it's a good idea to check your throttle position sensor. Now, this one's a little questionable. It has black silicone RTV around it. Do not know why anyone would try that. So, it tested voltage fine. There is a range 0.75 to 0.98 of a volt. It, you should be in that happy range. Now, it did fall in that range, but I just, you know, I've seen sensors test with the right voltage range, but it doesn't mean they're working perfectly. So, I'm gonna suspect that's an issue. I don't like this. Somebody tried to do something here. I don't know if it's the do a vacuum leak or whatnot, but that's the kind of stuff that worries me, especially with all the stuff we're seeing on this car. It is now time to address this throttle position sensor. Let me give you guys a quick close-up view here before we start working on it. I do not like this RTV that you can see that's holding the sensor on. That doesn't make any sense to me as to why someone would do that. You can see even more in there squirting out. So I have zero idea why that's happening. That being said, it's time to swap out this sensor for a good one. I'm gonna put a Motorcraft unit in here and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do that. To replace the throttle position sensor, you're gonna need the following items. A new throttle position sensor. These come in uh, pretty handy. I've gone for the Motorcraft, so the Ford part. Here is that part number, if you're so inclined. You're also gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver. And most importantly, when you're going to set that throttle position sensor, you're gonna need a multimeter to test that voltage. Now there is an acceptable range, generally 0.75 to 0.98 of a volt is gonna be right where you wanna be. That's gonna vary based on your engine, your intake manifold, intake setup, cam, all that kind of fun stuff, all that fine tuning, but you generally wanna be in that range. So we'll use this to dial it in. The throttle position sensor can be moved, <laughs> kinda of like I'm moving my multimeter here, and that's how you change the voltage. So let's go ahead and start this process. Time to pull the old unit. flathead screwdriver and ugh, why would anyone do this? Oh, there was RTV everywhere. So here's our sensor that we got on. You can see that wonderful RTV all smeared in there. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the surface of the throttle body now. I don't wanna put my new sensor on top of the RTV mess. Why? So here are the two next to each other. The old one on the right with the RTV stuck up in there. New one on the left. They're both the same Ford part number. 
It looks like the blue plastic is the updated part. So we're gonna install that and we're not gonna use any RTV guys. Let's get the new one on the car. Awesome, new throttle position sensor installed. Next up, what we're gonna be doing is key on engine off adjustment where we're gonna tweak this thing to get that right voltage. For this next step, we will be using our multimeter. Let's do that step now. Okay, so we have the key on engine off on the Mustang. It's time now to probe our TPS and see where we're at. Again, 0.75 to 0.98 is the acceptable range. I wanna be closer to 0.98 to tell you the truth. Uh, what you're looking at now is my multimeter right here in front of us. So we're gonna see what number we get. Also, since you can't really get these basic probes into the sensor, I put a little sewing needle in there and bent that up and hopefully I'm touching it. Uh, it is the green wire you wanna do that to. Hopefully that is making contact in there. Uh, we'll know in just a second. Ground, you can use anything in your engine bay. So let's see what we're at. Oop, there we go. We're at 62, 63, so we are way out. So let's adjust that back a little bit. We'll get that 68. So we need to drill these holes out, unfortunately. Uh, there's just not enough play to get it dialed in right where we want it. Take a drill bit and drill out that plastic nice and easy. Here's our throttle position sensor. I've drilled out the holes. They look really clean actually. I used a good titanium bit. Even on the back side, you can see the holes still look perfectly round. It's gonna give us a little more play when we're moving the unit. That should allow us to get into that range we need to be in. So it looks nice and clean, didn't hurt any of the structure. Just be aware if you are drilling yours out, just don't go too big and break these side clamps or hit the sensor itself. All right, let's go ahead and install it in the car. So we still need a little more play. Like I said, it's 75 to 98 is acceptable. Yep, I'm gonna drill off this hole one more time. Go big or go home. All right, let's try that again. We've run a bigger drill bit through there. That's about as far as you wanna go before you start really jeopardizing the edge of your sensor here. So this should give us the adjustability we need. Let's put it on the car. Now that's what she should sound like. <laughs> <laughs>